uh, called Alice and Jack. It comes from a terrifically talented uh, writer, director, uh, although he's a showrunner here and the writer, and a wonderful cast. And I'm going to introduce you uh, to two of them right now, a cast member and the man who uh, created this. First up, he's the showrunner and the writer, Victor Levin. And she is uh, internationally recognized as one of the finest actresses out there, actors working today. Uh, please welcome Ms. Alice, Andrea Riseborough. And thanks for coming, everybody. And uh, this is really cool. I've talked to Vic a little bit about this in the past, and I'm just fascinated about the the concept, the structure, how you came up with this idea of these two people, uh, Alice played by Andrea and uh, uh, Jack played by uh, Donal uh, Lisa. And, uh, and tell us about your initial idea, what you were looking for in telling the story that goes on for 15 years or so between these two people. Well, Thanks. That that was sort of the uh, point, was that it went on for all those years, and yet there was still trouble. Uh, and I thought, you know, many love stories play out over a shorter time span. What happens if you have a look at a significant portion of a life? People who come in and go out of each other's lives. Their situations having changed their uh, thoughts, about love having changed. How would that change your story? Yeah, and it's so well told here through uh, six episodes, is it? Yeah, six episodes, and it goes all over the place. It's really fascinating to watch. I'm gonna show you a little taste of it here so you get the idea, but there is so much more than just in this clip, but take a look at Alice and Jack. Just little bits and pieces of where this goes and back and forth. Andrea, what was this like uh, playing this role in this kind of uh, structure and format? Um, I mean, it was a, it was one of the most challenging roles that I ever played, I think, and that was because I came to it probably about five years ago now, and Vic sent me the script, he sent Donald the script at the same time, and I um, came onto it first, and so we were working, you know, with each other. Uh, we had the first episode, the last episode, and a version of what would be in the middle. And I thought it was such a brave and unique, true script. And um, mm -hmm. as we got to know each other, Vic then started to still inject parts of me into Alice. There was a sort of strange symbiosis, which was a very unique experience for me because I normally play people who are quite sometimes very far away from myself. And this was a sort of psychologically confusing experiment for me. Um, and it, diff it became difficult to know where Alice began, where I ended, you know, it was, it was a unique experience. Um, and I think Vic's writing is important because, and I, and I think this is an important part of our story, you know, there are people who respond to this sort of writing and they say, we just really would love the protagonists to be very straightforward and likable and held to ridiculously high moral standards. And I'm so sick of seeing that myself. I know that when I'm in love, I'm a total idiot <laughs> and uh, have no ability to behave like an even remotely normal human. <laughs> and I think it's beautiful to see work reflected in that way and what's gorgeous about the, the long time as a character in the story and to see a couple for that length of time can be so many of us in life, the younger ones you have yet to experience it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're so many of us in life and we know so many love stories that involve people who just quite, they don't quite come together but it may be a beautiful and epic love and every protagonist, no matter what they've been through, and Alice has been through an awful lot, they deserve their own love story. They deserve to be the protagonist in their own love story. So for all those reasons, this, and then Donald come saying he would sign on, just made it the most beautiful and unique project that I'd read. I love the fact about Alice that um, she can't love, let love into her life. She can do the opposite, but she has our time. 
And I think we do that as if, you know, you, if you have the courage, if you can courageously and truly love someone, you often protect them from yourself <laughs> in certain ways. And she's, she has quite a lot of damage, doesn't she? So she, she in, in the most um, loving way, although it, the fallout is very painful, she pushes him away. Yeah, it's interesting. Victor, this is ma it's a masterpiece there, uh, which is really cool when you consider the whole history. It was called Masterpiece Theater, but we shorten everything in our lives today. And now it's Masterpiece, and uh, it's kind of cool to have your name next to Masterpiece. Uh, yeah, I grew up watching Amazing, right? Masterpiece Theater. It was required doing at our house, and, uh, and, and I, you know, I was, as I've said all along, I, one of the many, many reasons I miss my parents so much yeah. is that they would have been so happy if you had them. That's cool. Um, talk about the structure. She mentioned the first script and the last script were written, but the middle part was not, and that's how you as a writer approach this, that you knew how to start it and you knew how to end it. And uh, talk about that process is unique. Well, it, it doesn't have giant story moves in it, so it lives and dies on execution. And I thought the best way to put a good foot forward was to actually write it, write as much of it as I could realistically before I asked someone uh, such as Andrea and, and, and Donald to even have a look at it. I didn't want them to be hearing a conversation about it. I wanted them to be hearing, to reading the thing itself. I mean, it takes almost as much time to pitch it anyway, for God's sake, <laughs> driving all over the place. You might as well just create an asset, write, write the thing, show them what the dialogue feels like, show them who the characters are, and, and, and then everyone knows what it is. And there's no discussion later on about, oh, we thought it was gonna be, no, no, no. Every, everybody knows who she is, who he is, and what the, you know, the, the stock in trade of the show is. So, so that's why I did it. It took a little extra time, but I was working with Michael London. I know you guys know him, a fabulous producer who, you know, was so uh, wonderful about seeing the whole field too. And so he could react to those first two scripts and help me make sure that I was, you know, ending us in a place that the first script allowed us to get to. And then, yeah, it was a prose document for the stuff that was in the middle. Here's, here are the events. It wasn't very long, right? Maybe five, six pages. But it was, we wound up sticking more or less to it. And, and it was a roadmap that allowed us to know rhythmically where one episode would end and the next begin. Cinematically, did you have any inspirations that the movies you may have seen that you'd like to do? I know we've talked before about that and movies we love and things. Uh, but what, would, what were yours? Well, you know, I'm always in favor of inscrutable Europeans, but this time we found an inscrutable Scandinavian, very different. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, Yuvo Kuasmanen, who is one I know you know, a fabulous director, a winner of the Cannes Film Festival, a maker of two incredible films, wanted to do it because Andrea wouldn't let him say no. You should talk about what you did to about stalking you ho Yes, the stalking you ho which is our next film, by the way. <laughs> um, I love the script so much, and it, and it was originally, interestingly, set in New York, and we relocated to London, and so there's been a, a really interesting journey with it. But as I read it, I was thinking, wouldn't it be just so fantastic if it was captured, if it were captured in the most raw, cinematic way? And I'd just seen Compartment Number Six, which is Yuho's um, Globe-nominated uh, film that he made in Finland. He's actually not Scandinavian, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna be that dickhead that says this now, but apparently they don't identify as Scandinavian. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so he's Finnish. I, I have to write a note. It's adjacent, it's adjacent. Uh, and, I, and I was shooting in Finland at the time, so I went and ate some really extraordinary uh, fish that they have at Christmas in Finland, in Helsinki. And halfway through the first mouthful, you were always like, you know that is very poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great, that's wonderful. <laughs> 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 ate 
And he's, he's a really funny, dry, brilliant human being, and, a, and a, just a fantastic director. And so I, I, I suggested that perhaps he might um, be a wonderful person to go to. And he, and he said yes after my very persistent stalking of him. And then we, we enlisted Hong Kao, who was, is a Sundance darling and a brilliant, brilliant director. And I think that the two of them were so naturally, they're both wonderful humans, but they were so, they worked together so with such ease and kindness. And it made for something that, that, in, that had a, a sort of both epic and in, intimate quality, uh, I think. Uh, amazing. How did you develop the chemistry that, that would be necessary for this? Had you ever worked with Dono before? or? Yeah, so, How did it happen? So it was percolating over 15 years, or maybe longer, perhaps a bit longer. Donald and I have known each other the amount of time that Alice and Jack have known each other. And we met in our early 20s. We made a film with Mark Romanek called Never Let Me Go. And um, and then later on, a couple of years later, he played my brother. We played partners in that first film. He played my brother in, um, as Donald and I like to say, not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then he played my brother in a film called Shadow Dancer, which I made. Uh, and then we played, and then we were going to play partners again. So I've seen him grow up, and he's seen me grow up uh, together in the same industry. And he's a really wonderful friend. And he and I have both experienced this, a great love like this. And so to, to walk through that narrative, holding the hand of a friend, was very special. Well, oh, you said this is the most challenging part. I can't imagine watching all the parts you played. Uh, you know, so many of them are challenging and things. But uh, I don't know how you shot this in terms of uh, continuity and things, where we're going over all kinds of uh, periods in this relationship, uh, as it's seen in the show. So how difficult was that? Well, we shot in regular blocks, as, 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 as you would with any sort of television show or, or miniseries. And that said, as with all shooting, everything's backwards. You know, you change. You change. There's, there are always moments you have to slip in. You know, in the middle of being forty, you just have to slip in a quick scene of twenty-eight yeah. <laughs> because that's because you're losing the light. <laughs> um, and and then that's a challenge. That's an interesting challenge as well. You know, it's some, you have, you know, we can feel our bodies at different ages in our lives. It's wonderful to sort of play with that, express that, you know, to, you feel very differently in your body at 28 than you do at 40. Uh, I mean, the, these two actors are uh, incredibly able to remember the nuances of 28 versus 32 for yeah. the character. I mean, that's not the kind of thing you want to go around reminding people of in the shooting day. They just have to have it in their heads, and they did. It's, uh, it's amazing how much you have to carry around uh, when you're covering 18, 17, 18 years in the course of a story. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, it's challenging, but it's it's just lovely to look at this and see the entire series and the way it, it plays out. It's so great. I didn't mention that Vic Levin also uh, has a totally different side. He did Mad About You. You love that show? Yeah. 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 He's done this Unexpected Family with John Cryer right now. He does sitcoms. I mean, he is so versatile and is a film director himself, a really talented uh, person. So, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you both for coming out here today. Thank you very much. And right now, we're going to have a 